Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatorial. Now we're going to talk about two items from Tempest Fugitives, and these have been sent to me as free samples, so full disclosure there. If you consider that biased, then so be it. I don't think so. I get pretty, sent pretty much everything for uh, free samples. Um, so it's pretty much all on an even keel. Now, Tempest Fugitives are based in the UK, um, but they procure um, equipment like this jacket. Notice it's got the Scholar logo on. Very, very cool. I highly recommend fencing jackets with your logos on. Why not? Um, so this jacket is from them, but you'll notice it is made by PBT. So uh, Tempest Fugitives are a reseller, but they're also developing lots of new products with all sorts of different manufacturers. So they're working with companies like PBT and Caviton and various others um, to produce certain things, but they're also developing new products as well. Um, now, these two things are come under that heading. So does this um, fencing jacket, incidentally. Now, I have reviewed this fencing jacket already. If you're interested in it, then uh, check out in my review section the previous review of this. One thing I would just add to, to this, and I'm wearing this because it relates to the two other objects I'm going to show in this review, um, is that this is a really nice jacket, actually. It's really, really well made, and so far I've been very impressed by it. But it has to be pointed out that this is a jacket which is primarily suited to something like small sword. Um, it's kind of too light to use with even rapier or anything uh, harder hitting than that side sword, saber, and like that, and certainly not suited to long sword for most people, unless you augment it with bits. Now. Um, the reason I'm talking about this is because it does, again, relate to these two items that I'm going to show here. So, essentially, you're faced with a choice when you practice HEMA. Um, you either go for a lighter jacket and then augment it with bits when you require it for heavier hitting weapons. So, adding, uh, you know, forearm protectors, elbow cup, perhaps adding a uh, chest protector, blah, 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 various other things to it. Or you just go for a heavier jacket from the outset. And some of the heavier jackets have built-in padding. Some of them have removable elements like slide-in, slide-out bits of foam and stuff like this. So there are many, many different choices. And you need to decide what is the best combination of equipment for you to use. And also, you know, cost-effective, I guess, comes in for lots of people as well. What's the best set of equipment for you to use based on the training that you do the type of weapons you use, the type of sparring you do, so on and so forth. So, for example, for me, the main choice on a week in, week out, uh, you know, twice a week training uh, kind of choice that I have when I'm throwing a certain amount of equipment into the kit bag is I want stuff that's not too hot because we're training indoors for the most part and it can get quite stuffy. Um, but equally, it needs to be able to stand up to, at the very least, sabre and sometimes longsword. But equally, if I want to switch out and do some small sword, for example, then I want to be able to shed some bits of equipment. So I tend to go for a medium jacket. I don't go for the heaviest padded jackets. And I tend to go for something that's got a bit more padding than this because I require it for sabre. But could you use this for sabre, for example, um, or side sword, which is pretty much comparable? or even rapier, um, I would say possibly yes if you augmented it with other bits. Um, that being the case, if you add forearm protectors and elbows on here, um, then you still have to accept that you'll probably still get some quite heavy hits up around here, which you might find that you get much more serious bruising than you would do with a more padded jacket. Anyway, that being what it is, let's have a look at a couple of these things. Now, one of these things is very much an optional uh, kind of extra for a jacket like this, or indeed if you wear a medium jacket like I tend to, but then sometimes you want to use that medium jacket in what might be quite heavy competition. Um, maybe there's some heavy thrusters with quite stiff feathers, for example. And that is a chest protector. Now, I've used many chest protectors over the years, um, but this is a really nicely made one. Um, it's got a couple of features about it that I'll talk about in a second that make it a bit more specific to what we do uh, than the standard uh, sort of white plastic chest protectors that lots of standard fencing manufacturers sell. Now, the one thing I will say is, typically speaking, this will go underneath your jacket, okay? But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to put it on over the top of my jacket uh, for obvious reasons, okay? Now, uh, a couple of the things that make this more specific to what we do than the typical plastic ones. Number one, it has a sort of spongy, shock absorbent uh, interior in there, okay? So it's got a little bit of padding on the inside. And I would also add, 
there's some degree of sweat absorbency in there. Now, that is a double-edged sword, so to speak. Um, the advantage of that is you've got some shock absorbency and probably a bit more comfort on your body. Uh, and uh, you're not going to feel the sweat pooling like you do with the plastic chest protectors. Just to mention, incidentally, I wore plastic chest protectors uh, before we had good padded jackets for years in HEMA in the early days, so I'm very acquainted with them. And one of the nasty things with wearing a plastic chest protector underneath a jacket is it just ends up like a swimming pool underneath there. It's horrible. There's no breathability. So I'm not saying that this is breathable per se, but at least you've got a layer there that's going to kind of soak away some of that sweat. The downside is the same as the upside. The downside is that will absorb a lot of sweat. So you might find that this gets very smelly and very rank and you find that you're having to wash it, which you don't have to do with a plain plastic one. On the outside, you've got a smooth plastic layer, which is somewhat resistant. I should point out at this point, a lot of people confuse, the, confuse a chest protector with a plastron. They are different things. A plastron, uh, for those of you who don't know what a plastron is, think of it as something like a fabric stab vest. Um, so a plastron fundamentally is there to protect you from a broken blade or a sharp object that penetrates the jacket and it gives another layer of um, uh, thrust proof Newton rated uh, fabric underneath the main jacket to protect you from that stab and primarily it's there to protect your armpits so it's got a completely different purpose really to a chest protector. A chest protector is primarily there to protect you from hard percussive thrusts and cuts it has to be said as well cuts can sometimes come in and hurt you on the ribs or the sternum they don't usually usually it's thrusts um, so this is to protect your sternum and your ribs from those hard thrusts particularly from uh, stiffer blades so particularly for longsword so this could re really be worn with any jacket but as i say in terms of this jacket, what you could do if you wanted to do is you could wear a really light jacket so you don't get so hot and you could augment it with a um, chest protector. Now the other aspect of this that is different is this articulated part. Now, um, the idea of this is obviously to give some degree of flexibility. One of the disadvantages of chest protectors is they either end up being very short and therefore they don't come down very far or they end up being long and they inhibit your ability to bend forwards, which obviously if you're fencing in certain, for example, if you're doing Fabrice Rapier or a very low stances of sabre, what you'll find is your stomach, and in some cases even your, your kind of um, hips, I suppose, push upwards and will, a bit like a breast, breastplate on armour that's too long, it'll stop you uh, fully flexing. Let's just stick this breastplate on incidentally and see what that flexibility is like. So um, I obviously best done off camera because I had to move my microphone uh, because of where it was attached but um, as mentioned that's on the outside of the jacket there's nothing to stop you wearing this on the outside of the jacket it actually gives a bit of a kendo uh, look I think um, but uh, absolutely you could wear this on the outside in fact I might do on occasion uh, wear this on the outside rather than the inside then you don't have the sweat issue and your jacket as per normal absorbs the sweat instead of the chest protector I think primarily these are intended to go under the jacket, but anyway, you can choose what you want to do. Um, in terms of uh, any inhibition of movement of the arms, it doesn't. Um, if it came too wide out here, much like a real breastplate, it would interfere with the movement of the arms. It doesn't at all. It sits snug and close to my body. In terms of ease of putting it on, it's not, uh, it's not unlike a bra, uh, but it's a Velcro version instead of with hooks. And, um, I was able to do it myself relatively easy, uh, easily. It wasn't the easiest thing in the world, but equally I, it only took me 10 seconds uh, to put it on. So pretty easy uh, to put on and it sits in position. It's light, it doesn't slide around. If I, if I jump and move around, it's not, I don't feel like it's sagging down or trying to turn on the body or anything like that. Now, the one thing I was curious about is this articulation here with these um, e elastic, uh, elasticated, <laughs> I have problems with that word, elasticated straps here. Is that necessary and does it do anything? Well, I'm going to try bending down, so I'll go as low as I can down, probably off camera, just about. Um, so, so I'm not really sure it adds anything. I have to be honest, and I really wanted to say, wow, that's brilliant. Um, but it doesn't really move anywhere. So 
I'm not really certain what the purpose of this articulation at the bottom is, and that's my completely impartial and honest opinion. When I first saw it, I thought, oh, that's great. It's kind of like uh, an articulated breastplate, a bit like a placard with a, with a, uh, a demi-placard rather than with a, with a breastplate. And so one can move independently of the other. But this one doesn't, actually. It's pretty much fixed. So the question is, why are these two separate pieces? Well, I don't really know. Um, so there we go. Um, Jay or any of the other people at Tempest Food, just feel free to comment underneath this video and clarify that point. I'm not really certain that these need to be two separate pieces uh, because I think it might be complicating the production <laughs> um, and making extra expense where there doesn't need to be that. I don't know that you really gain anything from having that because they're not able to move independently of each other. So what you end up with, despite the fact you've got two separate pieces, is essentially a solid breastplate anyway. That being said, the breastplate is not long enough that it reaches, certainly on me, I'm six foot one, so about 184 centimeters, I think, in metric. Um, on me, it's not long enough that it causes any conflict with me bending anyway. So that doesn't need to be articulated. If it came further down, if it protected more down to my crotch, for example, then indeed I'd want more articulation up here. But anyway, it is what it is. Um, seems to be nicely made. I think it looks pretty nice. It's comfortable to wear. Don't even notice it there. Very, very light. Um, and certainly that is going to offer a huge amount more impact protection. And although it's not intended for it, it will also add more penetration protection as well, should there be an accident. Um, because I have seen... Um, I have seen blunt blade, six millimeter blunt tips go through fencing jackets, actually 350 Newton rated fencing jackets straight through the arm. So they can go through jackets. Obviously a broken blade can go through a jacket, unfortunately, despite the Newton rating. It, I'm not saying it won't go through this, but this will provide an extra layer of protection for that. Um, so. I think it's a cool thing for what it is. It's a HEMA specific chest protector. You might find all sorts of uses for it, either under a jacket or over a jacket, for whether you're doing small sword or rapier or long sword or saber or side sword or sword and buckler or whatever. Um, I think that uh, it's gonna be useful to lots of people. Incidentally, if you simply do sparring with nylon swords or sacks, for example, where you don't really wear an awful lot of protection apart from some gloves and a mask, or even if you do Kali or a Screamer, um, or use Shin Eye or, you know, LARP swords or something else, you might also find that this is a useful chest protector. You might be able to incorporate it into your training gear, even if you don't do HEMA. Right, the next thing, which again uh, augments what I'm wearing here. Now, before I show you it, I'm just going to talk about neck protection very quickly. So this uh, jacket does not have any rigid neck protection. It does have what's called a blade catcher, which you'll notice is a kind of fold down bit, which means that should a blade travel up underneath the fencing mask, in theory, it should get caught in that material, snag in that material, instead of riding up straight up underneath my neck. Um, the thing about fencing masks is they have this great neck protection here, but things can come underneath them when the mask is on. Things can come sometimes slide up here um, and come underneath. For that reason, in pretty much every competition I'm aware of, it's mandatory to wear a form of throat protection commonly called a gorget or gorget, uh, depending how you want to pronounce it. Gorget is correct. Um, and this is a great new Gorget from Tempest Fugitive. Now, this is completely true statement, okay? This is not me, I'm not being paid to say this or bribed or anything else. Number one, I hate wearing Gorgets. And I'll be completely honest, in my normal club sparring, I don't wear one, okay? I do wear one in competition when I'm required to wear one or at an event where I'm required to wear one and I have maybe five or six different gorgets in my equipment pile at the moment, and I've owned probably 10 to 15 in my life. This is by far the nicest gorget that I have owned um, for a number of reasons. So bear in mind, I hate wearing gorgets, okay? I find them restrictive, I find them bulky, I find them hot, they interfere with my mask, they interfere with my jacket, I hate them, okay? But um, this one, is really quick to get on and off. It's really low profile. 
It is hard, not all gorgets are hard, believe it or not, some of them are flexible. It is hard, so it protects the windpipe from being collapsed, from being thrust into, and it has this little articulated bit underneath. So I'm going to move my mic again, get this chest protector off, and let's have a look at how this gorget goes on. So the first thing to say is that a gorget goes underneath the jacket, not over the top of it. Um, it, you could try and put it over the top of it, but it would kind of completely undermine the whole purpose of it being there. The primary purposes of the gorget to be, uh, to be there in the neck is to assist in things not being able to ride up under your chin here, so to help catch stuff. But primarily, the most important purpose is to protect the windpipe from being ruptured, torn, collapsed, whatever you want to term it, from a strong thrust. Okay, and this is a really nasty prospect. So again, usually, um, from a frontal point of view, you've got the front of the fencing mask bib, and this is Newton rated thrust um, sort of resistant. That will be enough in, you know, 95% of cases to protect your throat from a direct thrust. However, there's always weird things that happen. Sometimes thrusts come from below. Sometimes you might stumble as you get thrust or all this kind of stuff. And there is always a chance that that thrust can come underneath the mask. So it is essentially to add a level of protection to a direct thrust through the fencing mask bib and provide pretty much complete protection should it come underneath the bib. So first things first, we open up the jacket. Again, trying not to mess too much with the mic. There we go, I'll give you access to my throat. Here is the gorget. First of all, a lot of gorgets are a real pain in the butt to put on. This one, bam, is on. <laughs> it is literally as simple as that. Now, it does restrict your movement slightly, okay? And it's difficult to have a hard protection. In fact, I would go as far as to say, impossible to have a hard throat protection that doesn't at all restrict movement up or down because the si simple fact is you have to have to protect your windpipe you have to have a certain height of um, hard material here and clearly if you put your chin down far enough that hard material can only move a certain distance so it's a catch-22 you've got to you've got to put hard material in front of your windpipe and so therefore it is going to restrict to some extent. That being said, this extension down here is fully flexible. It is on elasticated, uh, whatever it's called, string cord. Um, so they're replaceable, of course, um, but they're highly flexible. It's a very simple construction, and this is some type of high impact plastic or thermoplastic, perhaps. Okay, so once it's on, then we just simply do the uh, jacket up fully. Make sure it's all the way up to the top. And then we Velcro around there, and it sits pretty much completely under the jacket. Now you'll notice, hopefully, it has a lip there. So as well as having a blade catcher to your jacket, which most HEMA jackets now have, and most fencing jackets, I believe, now have, um, so as well as having a catcher there, if it misses that one, you've got a catcher under here as well with this rim. And that is very, very important for two reasons. One, to catch blades. But secondly, it means you've got a nice broad top, so it's not going to hurt your chin or under your neck should you fall over or get grappled or just suddenly look down really hard. You know, it's not going to cut into you or hurt you in any way. Very, very important as well. So this is really light. It's not really going to add any extra to your weight or your heat. Um, it does restrict your movement slightly, 100%. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say, you know, if I want to look down there, it does change things slightly. But my observation from wearing armour and from wearing HEMA sparring gear and everything else is generally speaking, if you're fencing, actually a lot of the time your, um, your torso, your body is tilted forwards, okay? Which actually means you're less likely to be doing this. You don't usually look down like this. And if you have something there like a gorget or a bever and you want to look down, your body kind of adapts itself and all you simply do is you stick your ass out a, a bit backwards and you put, point the chest down to look down. So it's not like you're just moving your head down like this. So it's just not really a huge problem. Is it less pleasant than not wearing a gorget? Yes. I would much prefer to fence without a gorget on, but if it's required, if you think it's uh, a good idea to do so, I think for lots of people it probably is recommended, certainly for competition it's recommended. Um, as a general risk reducing measure it's recommended. Um, and this will save lives, 100% that this hard protection over the windpipe can save your life. 
primarily from crushing of the windpipe, but potentially from piercing uh, as well if a broken blade happens to go through a jacket. So there we go, two absolutely fantastic um, new products from Tempest Fugitives. They're developing new things all the time. In fact, I'm talking to them um, at the moment about a completely different piece of equipment. Um, if you're interested in talking to them about developing specific things, by all means, just get in contact with them. They're very open to that dialogue. They work with many, many different manufacturers all over the world, uh, and they pick the best manufacturer for that specific piece of equipment, and they work on it with them. Um, so this chest protector, very useful for all kinds of people, all kinds of sparring, all types of weapons. It's a useful thing to have in your kit bag. Um, and this gorget, literally, and just to demonstrate how quick it is to take off, Bam, there we go, it's off. That is the most comfortable balance against safety, most safe, comfortable, and easy to take on and off and least encumbrance gorget that I have ever seen, let alone, let alone owned. I'm not gonna argue it's necessarily the most protective. There's no real padding to it. Um, there's a little bit of padding on the inside, but not a lot of shock absorbency. But in terms of life-saving, having a hard thing in front of your windpipe to protect against crushing and potentially piercing or cutting. Absolutely great, great little piece of kit. If you don't like wearing gorgets like me, um, then this is probably the gorget for you. I hope that's been useful. Um, if there are other things you'd like me to review, other types of equipment, stuff you really want to know about, or indeed if there's anything that Tempest Fugitives do that you'd like me to review, tell them, tell me, I'm sure we can work it out. Hope this has been useful uh, for some of you. Check out the link below to Tempest Fugitive's site and you can see all the stuff that they sell. And I'll see you really soon again on Skill Lab Gladiatoria channel. Cheers, folks! Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks!